Niji Sanji is very worried and in huge trouble because the U.S. decided to ban something that's very important for them. We also have Off Kai where Phase Connect has decided to do some very, very lovely things with Artist Ali. We have Alira who's also bleeding subs always because of her black stream. And she has decided to go to Billy Billy and has fully debuted in Billy Billy. Yago is loved by his talents and so much more on this VTuber Next news segment along with memes. Softy C has finally banned it. I did talk about it earlier today in the previous video that I made and I was talking about how they could have banned it. They're looking up for it and understanding is that FTC has right now voided all non-compete clauses in the United States for American workers. That includes American contractors, if I, I believe. And I think it is a grandfathered in type of clause. So what grandfathering is, is that if you had a non-compete before this thing came out, it puts you in there anyways. So Americans VTubers can essentially jump from one company to another without waiting months or years. I've tagged a certain lawyer. Basically, yeah, it, it works for, for American signed Nuro to Kurosanji. In theory, yes, they mean they would be unable to enforce it or include non-compete in their contracts for US-based talents. Basically, they made them unenforceable. In my state, it was already unenforceable years ago, but now the US has made it unenforceable. Came into effect for, for talents based in Ontario, Canada in October 2021. Hence why I figured Doki was in Ontario, giving her greater tool set under common law to avoid her non-compete from Kurosanji. Just Canadian. That basically, anything that hurts any Kuro standing is great. Unlike Japan, America has protections for whistleblowers. Recent events that certain aircraft manufacturers would beg to differ. The feds are already hunting them down. If foreigners did that on American soil, it's not, no legal. It's not legal. It uh, it says it doesn't take effect for 120 days, which is uh, four months. And will almost certainly be challenged in court, but it does void all existing non-compete agreements unless a senior executive uh, is the one. Basically, like your CEO, that type of thing. Because I think CEO, the reason why you have enough stuff that you know in your company, that it would be very bad for you to compete with someone else. That said, I don't really expect much, if anything, to change. Also, CEOs get a golden parachute, so you have compensation to protect you from that. It's going to argue that they are contractors, not employees, so this ban doesn't apply to them. It's for employees, from what I've read. And the only people they have to convince are the talents they're trying to gaslight into staying with them. If any company has, I mean, you could sign it, but like, for example, in the state that I live in, it is unenforceable, which means, of course, they can't enforce it. They can't tell me that 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 I can't compete. Nobody's going to want to be the test case in court and threats from the company will almost surely cause more people uh, before they can even get the point of leaving the non-compete clause doesn't apply to anybody going indie, which is the case of the vast majority of people who leave. So if you want to be protective of yourself and worry about the non-compete clause, then you could just become an indie for six months. And then, you know, if you're part of a big company like like any uh, any color and uh, Hollow Live, then you can become an indie for six months. People will know where you are or you can give hints if you want. You know where you are. And then um, then you're good. Like, I mean, Kason did it. Um, uh, Mika Neko did it. Uh, other people did it, so it's not going to be a big issue. Uh, like Matara, Kenan Kuro, Michi Mochi V, they all did it. Uh, I mean, there's so many things in NDA that was invalidated by the U.S. laws anyways. Niji Sanji still might use the excuse it's illegal in Japan. So that's one thing, of course. There's a time expiration on this whole contract thing. After a certain amount of time, you can work for competitors just fine. Niji contract is so illegal that one more thing is not going to kill them anyways. This is not going to affect Japanese VTuber companies so much as people like to believe. Firstly, not many of them have office or legal representation in the U.S., so you can actually not even be affected by them to begin with. Only many focuses on sales and events, not managing the talents. Thus, it's impossible to punish them if they violate the rules. In the legal mindset said many times, U.S. talents can only play defensive, which means that the wrongdoing party can only come, can't only come come to the U.S. Uh, to go after talents for compensation. U.S. is not the only source of English-speaking VTubers. And of course, there's Britain and other places. They want to deal with this. They feel the rule is too hard to work with, so they can find substitutes from places like Canada, Europe, Southeast Asia, Asian countries. Yeah, they can do that. They can go to Asian countries if they want. Uh who speak conversational level of English, if the rules are so strict in Asian nations, then they can move around, make the U.S. VTubers less appealing. They can try. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to go for them. It may not go so well for them. You never know, though. I mean, they have lawyers, so they might just try to just skip around as much as they can until they find a place that is friendly to them. I did mention this before, but some people were mentioning that they wanted to actually see the rule. Generate or 8,500 new businesses each year and raise worker wages because they won't have to do non-completes. Not could be clauses, keep wages low, suppress new ideas, rob the American economy of dynamism, including the more from the more 8,500 new startups that would be created year non-competes are banned. The FTC's rule of banned non-competes will ensure Americans have the freedom to pursue a new job. Uh, the rule banning non-competes will lead to businesses growing by 2.7% per year, more than 8,500 additional businesses created each year. Higher earning workers, higher earnings for workers, new earnings increasing for the average worker for 524 per year. 
expected to lower health costs by $194 million for the next decade. In addition, it's expected to drive innovation, leading to an estimated average of 17,000 to 29,000 more patients each year, patents each year, for the next 10 years. Non-competes are widespread and often exploitative practice imposing contra contractual conditions to prevent workers from taking new jobs or businesses. Uh, Non-competes often force workers to either stay in a job they want to leave or bear other significant harm and or cost, such as being forced to switch to a lower paying field, being forced to relocate, being forced to leave the workplace altogether. Yeah, it's really bad. It honestly is really bad. Expensive litigation, estimated 30 million workers are subject to non-competes. Under the FTC's new rule, existing non-competes for the vast majority of workers will no longer be enforceable uh, after the rule's effective date, which I think is in 120 days. Uh, except for the, represented, the, the executives, which represent 0.75% of workers, they can remain enforced until the FCC's final rule, but employers are banned from entering into or attempting to enforce any new non-competes, even when the rule is not active, except when, uh, or even in senior executives. So the senior executives are not being grandfathered in, but they are made to actually uh, go through with it in the future. Employers will be required to provide notice to workers other than senior executives who are bound by an existing non-compete that they will not be enforced. January 2023, FTC filed a proposed rule that would be subject to a 90-day public comment period. FTC received more than 26,000 comments to the proposed rule, 25,000 comments in support of the rule. Uh, the comments informed the FTC's final rulemaking process with the FCC carefully reviewing each comment and making changes to the proposed rule in response to the public's feedback. The final rule, the commission has determined that an unfair method of competition and therefore a violation of Section 5 of the FTC Act. And they can enforce it. They, like, um, for employer centered to not compete and workers to, enfor and to enforce it. So they can't enforce it. That's what they're saying. The commission is bound, is found that non-competes tend to negatively affect competitive conditions in labor markets, inhibiting efficient matching between workers and employers. The commission has also found that non-competes tend to negatively affect competitive conditions in product and service markets, inhibiting new businesses, formations, and innovation. There's also evidence that non-competes lead to increased market concentration. Uh, so alternatives, uh, employers have several alternatives. Uh, the trade secret laws and non-disclosure agreements both provide employers with well-established means to protect their proprietary and, and sensitive information. So that's what most people go through. They go through uh, NDAs. Over 95% of workers with a non-compete already have an NDA, so non-competes are not even necessary is what the FTC is saying. Commission also finds that instead of using non-competes to lock in workers, employers that wish to retain employees can compete on the merits of the, for the workers. That's what they should do. They should compete on the merits, not on a non-compete. Under the final rule, existing companies for senior executives remain in force. Non-competes. Employers, however, are prohibited from entering into or enforcing new non-competes for senior executives. The final rule defines senior executives as workers earning more than $151,000 annually per year and who are in policy-making places. Additionally, the commission has estimated provision in the proposed rule that would have required employers to legally modify existing non-competes by formally rescinding them. That change also helps to streamline compliance. Instead, under the final rule, employers will simply have to provide notice to workers bound to an existing non-compete that it will be not enforced in the future. To aid employers' compliance with this requirement, the commission has included model language in the final rule that uh, can you, the people can use to communicate with workers. The commission vote to approve the issuance with 3 to 2. The commission's Melissa Holyak, Andrea and Ferguson voting no. Commission's written statements will follow at a later date. Final rule will become effective 120 days from this register, which is the 23rd of, uh, it's going to be the 23rd of uh, July, I believe. Once the rule is effective, market participants can report information of a suspected rule break to the Bureau of Competition by emailing competition here. So they're making it really hard for them to actually compete, to, to do this non-compete because NDAs do the same thing and other, you know, uh, non-disparagement clauses and things like that do the same thing. That's the main thing that they're going for. You can report somebody after 120 days to this. Any new people going into a new job, like anyone new that goes into Nidhi Sanji will not be able to be put in a non-compete if they are part of the US. And that's a good thing. That's I'm glad that they finally did this. Now, this is how you give support to people. This was an announcement. It says, Vendors Face Connect's got you covered. If you're vending at Ofkai Gen 3, you'll be refunded your booth or table fee in a couple of weeks. No action required. Please give a big thanks to Face Connect for supporting this year's vendors. We are pleased to announce that in addition to the sponsorship of Ofkai Expo's 2024 vendor hall, Face Connect has generously covered the booth and table costs for all vendors in the hall. That is a lot of money. That is thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly, you know, for vendor be fees and vendor booths, especially for the big ben the big vendor booths. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to Face Connect for their support of Ofkai Expo and our artists and vendors. This is humongous. This is something that Sakana is a big win. People are not going to forget this. They're absolutely going to keep this in mind 
And they're absolutely going to make sure that this is like something like wow for them, you know? And uh, it says Sakana, Gunrun, and Yago are like the three holy kings of VTubing at this point. In all seriousness, though, this is an insanely cool gesture for Face to do. It really is. Holy S, do you think so? You do a con for free as an artist or dealer? That's insanely generous. Absolutely amazing gesture. Fishman is winning, of course. Uh, they said whining here, but they meant winning. The fish knows how to get to people's hearts. You know what they say fish is good for the heart health. Calling it now, Saka and Face connects quickly to Niji's place as part of the big three of ENV tubing. And if that spot hasn't been taken already, Fishman is reeling it in fast. Now it's support now that is supporting artists. As an artist, at tables at cons, tables costs are pretty pricey even without the merch or production costs. This is what Niji should have done for PR if they really cared about artists instead of just empty words or even straight up forgetting to pay them altogether. This guy knows when to play his cards. He absolutely does. Like, if Riku sees this, he'll get a heart attack. Never! Plot twist. Fishman paid off Kai with coffee beans in lieu of currency. Honestly, if Niji wanted to make the Wii Support Artist campaign, they should have done this instead of making Liver's tweet. Exactly. This is a much, much, much better campaign than the tweets that they that they did for Niji Sanji of, oh, you know, thank you so much, um, artists. Thank you so much. Now, this is a real showing of artists. It's like sometimes artists have hundreds of dollars that they have to pay or thousands in some cases for the big boosts that they have to pay at a con in order to even be in the artist alley. And this is something that um, is insane for uh, Face Connect or someone else to do. And I'm very glad that they did it. So here we go, people. Uh, this is Michi or Mika Melatika <clears throat> on the recent tox doxing drama that happened between, um, well, everybody pretty much. It was Kenji and Sayu and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's take a look at what she has to say. Oh, the PR brain's working. Yep. I think. I, Michi Mochivi, should not talk about this. Aha! Aha. Character development. Yes. <laughs> Think it over. Our little board of PR team sitting here quivering their boots. They're like, remember that one time we said she can do whatever she wants? Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. Something. Maybe. <laughs> they did it to themselves. I, 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 there's a story, though. Unironically, um, I know a person that did get into some trouble with that right oh not wow thing, by the way doxing is horrible do not dox people yeah that's absolutely really do not dox people. behavior okay really creepy weird champ and if you're the type of person that's like haha you know what be so funny Man, because i'm so angry i'll dox someone you're creepy your you're actually cover. a weirdo weird champ that is behavior. actually weird yeah, that's yes behavior. that's weird okay if you're mad at someone you know what's the most the meanest thing you can do if you hate someone so much is to just like ignore them like if they're dead to you that is the meanest thing you can do you doing what's anything true? else just shows how obsessed you are like low-key you're freaky that you're actually that's a freak behavior okay that's my opinion the opposite of love is not hate the opposite of love is like indifference but okay don't talk and that yeah the opposite know, like one of that my would very be a close opposite. friend aha uh -huh, i know someone that knows a guy who knows a fish that knows a person and they have experience with getting docked right and during their time there's a point where they're so tired not because they got docked but because the pictures were so ugly that they decided to dox themselves <laughs> at one point real story and it didn't work <laughs> so i'm at that point where preferably never getting docked but if please pick good pictures come on man just pick like, good pictures if you're gonna dox me please just, just use me. Put good okay, pictures not about anyone else just about me if i were to ever get into that situation preferably i'll do it myself thanks smile for the camera but the uglier the photos the funnier i can do that myself too but i think you guys are chill like something i've noticed is everyone here is quite chill and i don't think <laughs> if you can't if you can't solve it befriend it or some sh i don't know what the saying goes but i think like the community is very very chill i don't think i'll run into any problems like that i think you guys are very like if you I show it show it if she's you not gonna run into that problem it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because I said this yesterday. I was like, you know, guys, I, I don't think I'm comfortable yet, like, showing my skin. Hee <laughs> hee. And you guys are like, okay, bro. Like, thumbs up. So it's, it's very easy. Not relevant enough. Shut your mouth. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't think Michi Mochi V is going to get doxxed. There's always a risk. There's always a risk of doxing. Even as a VTuber, especially if you're a big VTuber, you could always piss someone off to the point that they're going to dox you. That is a risk. Hopefully, it doesn't happen to Michi Mochi V. Hopefully, they don't ever get to run into that issue. Um, I have been threatened to be doxxed both recently and in the past. Um, and I just say, you know, you do what you're going to do. Uh, I'm not going to cower. I'm not going to stop creating content. I'm just going to be what I am. I reported them. Their account got deleted. That was just it. I didn't think it was big news because I don't think I'm going to get doxxed. And if I do get doxxed, oh, well, whatever. It's just the way it is. Uh, so just either way, take care of yourselves and, uh, don't dox other people. That's kind of just, like I said, not only creepy, it's just not, not good behavior. Here we go with the current thing. This guy has a complete parasocial disappointment. Ever since Luca Kaneshiro was exposed but in 4K by his ex-moderator, Wazir Warmonic, he really hasn't been the same after the recent termination of Selen Tatsuki. Basically, the Nidisanji variant of a best girl, Yago. It's just, I don't even know how to word it. I used to love watching Nidisanji and Livers, as their content have helped me a lot in the past to bear with plenty of stress. Like I always say, if you have an Oshi that helps you that way, then yes, 
go for it. You know, do what you can to um, support them always. But to see the state they are now and the environment many of the graduated terminated livers uh, used to work under makes me feel like little BS. Uh, all this time, Nidhi Sandy fans were brainwashed to believe that Hollow Life was a tyrannical place where livers had to be idols and weren't allowed to be themselves. Now we know the truth. And if Luca does deserve his termination, how would everyone feel as a result? No one has responded to this, and it has been removed from Kuro Sanji. Here we see weird moderation on Kuro Sanji's part. <clears throat> I've been getting hit tips about Kuro Sanji having a strange moderation. I don't know what this one would have been deleted for. I don't know exactly what this one would be deleted for, but um, I don't see that anything wrong was said. It was just kind of talking about things that everyone already knew. I think they are possibly infiltrating the subreddit as moderators because some of these things that are being disappeared like this one uh, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me why this one this one was just saying, you know, the Razio Warmonic thing. It even had the archive.org uh, part to it. Was it because it was quote unquote doxing, quote unquote harassment? What? Like, I can't see a reason why this was deleted. Now this has become the story. I don't know why this was deleted either. I mean, I don't think it's a hack from what I've been seeing with the things they've been deleting. Um, it very much looks more like we have some infiltrators possibly in the sub that aren't happy with things that are going around and Oh, well, I mean, you still saw it. They weren't able to remove it fully because you could still see it. I still read it. The only reason I refreshed was to try to get some comments down there. But of course, it's deleted. So there are going to be no more comments. Um, and yes, it is a disappointment that the thing happened with Razio Warmonic. It is a disappointment that he wasn't able to actually talk about it because of the way Nidhi Sanji works. Uh, and it's also a big disappointment that something simple as this, I don't think it was doxing. I don't think it was harassment. I don't think it was anything negative is to the point where you're going to have this happen. That is the weird thing for me, to have this type of stuff happen. Well, we're going to leave it at that. And the story changed quickly. Here we go. It says, not to mention cover will go after them in defamation charges. Cover, unlike Niji, will protect their talents against allegations without legitimate proof. <clears throat> During the start of Rushia's issue, Cover was 100% behind Rushia until evidence surfaced that forced her hand to terminate her. Exactly. Her hand was forced. The hand was forced to terminate. Absolutely. Then she isn't as bad as Uka Kaneshiro, has broken contract, but still there in Nidhi Sanji. Plus, based on Nidhi Sanji's dis declining reputation being beyond re redemption, Rushiets does not be considered taboo unlike Vox and Luka. Yes, we know what she did was absolutely unacceptable, but we need to understand why she did it and what she did. She wasn't okay until now, or she's stepping away from the internet. How enraged every Hoshiomi. Yeah, how to enrage. Yeah, that's basically they're going to enrage every single Hoshiomi out there. So we say would ignore him and just let like covers PR and legal teams go after his butt and how she managed every other problem that's headed her way. Not to mention, he'll be pointing a huge target on his back once the unicorn fandom edit uh, referencing uh, the subset of Hollow Life fandom. I'm not saying entirely of the Hollow Life fandom are unicorns, but Hollow Life does get involved sometimes. So yeah, Hollow Life is going to get involved. Hollow Life is going to uh, have stuff happen, you know, cause things to happen in such a way that there will be no issues anymore. Uh, and that's what's going to happen. They're going to have that happen. Absolutely. Talking about uh, Niji JP's top liver, or at least what their people are claiming as a top liver, uh, being forced into a second job. We also know Niji JP female livers, including Tsuki no Mito and Hoshiwara Sara. Sara is a friend of Natsuhiro Matsuri and Hachama, and one of the few winners in Niji Sanji. Yeah, Sara is one of the people that I, that I do like in Niji Sanji. She's on Hachama streams a lot. So it's assumed that she would be able to make a reasonable living in this black company. And in case you guys need to know who she, what she looks like, this is her right here that's her that's her right there she's been hachama's friend for a long time she does show up on hachama streams occasionally minecraft streams etc however she was despised by Nizi sisters as an honorary hollow liver when sara went to meet million uh even though there were only three female female livers million almost no one in the jp community is celebrated there is reference to by the derogatory term the b brat and a dislike for her professed love of hollow life and a refusal to give in to slander from these sisters. However, she seems to have a different ego than other lazy GP JP livers in that she's tough enough to not give in to such slander because of her ability to achieve gold buttons, do solo concerts, win Oshinoko collaborations, even in the poor Niji environment. Now, one would have thought that she would have been paid to some extent, even though she is indeed in a black company. But according to channel members only stream that was recently leaked to the Niji sisters community, she has started a second job. Moreover, it is a full-time job. I don't know if this is entirely true, but I wonder how much the black company agencies are exploiting even their extremely few gold button livers that they can make a living without a second job. She had the same bad behavior as other livers when she first debuted and had 
talk blow up, but compared to many of the scandals of later livers, she's one of the few conscientious people in Nidisanji who are friends with talents of other agencies. Is the black company again trying to out oust as much talents of Liver? They may not be trying to oust them, but you know, they don't they don't make they don't make a lot of money in there. Unfortunately, just my speculation. I don't think she's in financial trouble. Even if we take 2% into account, I think she's di diversifying her options. I don't watch her much, but she's smart and there's no way she hasn't noticed that Nidhi Sanji's in a decline. She just wanted some more money then I'd assume she would get a part-time job, not a full-time one. Uh, there are plenty of corporal VTubers who have second jobs in the form of them still being active in some degree on the pre-corporal alias, Mori Calliope comes to mind, where they typically do work that they couldn't do as a VTuber alias for whatever reason. I also believe that a lot of pre-boom uh, VTubers, their corporal VTuber gig was initially and maybe still is a side gig for them. Yeah, a lot of people still have, like, I know Holostar still, still does it as a side gig. So the worst case scenario to consider here isn't that Niji's robbing her so hard she can't make ends meet. But rather, she's on her way out the door and already started uh, uh, what's either going to be her next main gig or just what she's doing to make money to keep herself busy until her non-compete finishes. She is just my opinion. Since the member stream is already leaked, why not leak it to the point of us in direction? Uh, to be fair, she can have another job similar to how many hollow lives and other things do other things outside. It's true. It could also just be her reading the writing on the wall and establishing herself with another source of income because she doesn't see things looking good at the company. I would be pretty shocked if I had anything to do with her not making enough money. Can mods put this down already? OP has a history of record of posting wild claims. Um, does it ever feel weird that the member content is used to hide information ever since Pomo's big break video? So this is a rat. This is absolutely a rat. This is not 100%, but I mean, she is doing the second job. Like I said, there's um, hollow stars who do second jobs. There's other people out there who do second jobs uh, because they're not going to fully have the whole situation. Uh, sometimes there's lulls, sometimes there's there's peaks. They're not going to always be making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in Super Chats every month. You save for the bad times, and sometimes when there's not enough money for those save bad times, you have to go and actually do uh, second-time work, like second jobs and second part-time work and things like that. So I respect her for doing that, absolutely. We all know about Alira. We all know that she used to be at 600k, and she's still having a subscriber decline. Subscriber decline. I did imagine the sub bleed would be high and important that I expected to stabilize after so long, and yet she still keeps stably losing followers. The five minutes I monitored the count, she lost two subs, which isn't a lot for a 553k sub. It's not a lot. Uh, the black video being up is not going to help stop the bleeding anytime soon. However, it is a lose-lose situation for her. Pulling it down would indirectly mean that Nidhi Sanji accepts that they were wrong, and we know that it ain't happening. Keeping it up equals this happens. Now we have the news that she will be debuting on Billy Billy soon. So as far as normal people concerned, and perhaps Illyra too, the channel's a dead one. That's true. I think it's far more grim feature. Future. Having a main Chinese audience just recipe for disaster. Absolutely a recipe for disaster. It will continue to be a recipe for disaster. Dating with the CN crowd is like handing a ticking time bomb with many restricted policies. Nearly Billy has in place. It's only a matter of time till they F up and there will be nowhere to run. For Clickland, she has only posted a short self-intro video so far. She made a debut on Billy Billy and Illyria debuting Billy Billy the same Chinese website as Vox. Like... There have been things to to mention it. Like right here, we have this one. She made her thing here um, on Nidhi Sanji. How would this go? She stopped streaming on Ian for good. We don't know. Doesn't require content creators to speak Chinese. Most of the viewers there don't have issues with interaction in English. Career on YouTube is dead, so she's chasing the same jobs as Fox, as I mentioned before. Nothing happened in Coco's stream. And they get angry at people who mention Taiwan, a country. Yeah, that she's going to have that trouble. Pretty much ended her YouTube career with that black screen video. Seems like damage control to the worst kind. Desperate kind. It's a shame as well because she did enjoy her streams, everything that happened. Of course, and Niji was the one who did the damage, of course. So we're going over here, back here. It's not going to stabilize if she doesn't, uh, because she doesn't stream. So those who are on the fence aren't anymore. This part of the bigger problem that Niji has, the infrequent streams and lack of content between them, combined with an 8 to 12 week membership, only chat. When they finally do stream, it's just asking to kill channel growth. She bailed on her English audience. We had stream from her when it wasn't even really her stream. Meanwhile, she ready to dump all YouTube fans on Billy Billy. Gigabrain. I'd be surprised if it was still going up. In the words of a certain awesome one on WWE, every day that I, Hololive V. Shoujo V. From Mirai, get better, I watch you get worse, which is all the people in uh, Nidhi Sanji. She will continue to bleed subs if she doesn't do anything. Like no content to watch, she doesn't even upload videos or shorts. Shocking how her reputation it fell as these days, the same people are less harsh on her, those she used to have better reputation with. Look like her dead subs wake up and chose violence. Yes. So her subs are going down. She did end up going to Billy Billy, as these people are saying. It's not a good move. For context, she doesn't even speak Chinese. That's fine with the English one, but the fact that she's going to Billy Billy is not a good thing. She can just leave Vox said, and Vox would never lie. It's not like Lyra killed her YouTube career participating in a video. Yeah, it's not like she did that kind of bad stuff. Of course. 
Let's take a look at what happens when a CEO actually cares for their people. It has been really huge now. <笑>普段どんな仕事してるんですか普段どんな仕事してるんですかまあ、いわゆる経営的な仕事あ、ああ、いわゆる経営的な仕事あ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、